Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my league starter for the new Path of Exile Delirium League. But before I, had, before I go ahead and continue this, I want to let you guys know that it's less of a guide and more of a skill tree outline because before I create an actual guide for you guys, I would like to really play through this league so I can give you guys the proper information. I know there's a lot of clickbait stuff out there and I don't want to be one of those people. So. With that being said, I want to start off by saying I'm going to be trying out the uh, new Rune Blast, I think it's Storm Stormbind setup. So Stormbind PoE to just explain to you guys what Stormbind is. Uh, we're going to go through and explain very quickly for those of you guys who are unaware. So Stormblind and Rune Blast is like a conjoint skill. So you get the skill Stormbind, which is a gem. So Sorry, I don't have these ahead of time. I actually just had them and I closed that of them because I'm smart. So Stormbind is right here. So channel to spread runes on the ground in a growing pattern. The rune fades away after a duration or will immediately be removed and deal damage in a circular area when detonated by rune blast. Enemies standing on the runes are hindered, reducing their movement speed. Now, before I go into this further, I want to say that this used to teleport you. It does not teleport you anymore. Also, we want to note a couple of things. A lot of people are going to say that this is an extremely clunky skill, and that may be the case. However, however, if you look at Stormbind, it has a default cast time of 0.12 seconds. And the Rune Blast cast time is 0.2 seconds. So it is correct in the essence where it's not going to be as smooth as a a build where you just right click one time and blow the whole screen up, but it's definitely a different alternative to a channeling skill that's kind of new and unique, so I would like to try it out. So, uh, one of the cool things to note about Storm Blast or, or Stormbind is the way that you can set it up and link it. So, if we take a skill like Infernal Blow as an example, Infernal Blow has a corpse explosion mechanic that is scaled separately from the actual attack. That is kind of how Rune Blast works, so I can't tell you the best links to use yet because I don't exactly know how to scale the Rune Blast part until I'm in the game. So I'll be talking about links in the first update video that I make, which will most likely be today or at the end of the day. So with that, I want to go ahead and talk about my skill tree, and then we're going to actually talk about the notables that, well, the new notables that we would potentially be aiming towards. So starting off with our tree. I decided to go Hierophant, and the reason why I decided to go Hierophant is this is the League of Mana, even though they have nerfed a lot of mana items, more specifically the Temple of Atsawaddle does not have the hybrid life, well the flat life, percent life, and the flat mana, percent mana anymore, except on jewelry the health still remains, but it was nerfed. So I decided to go Hierophant, you can also go as Trickster, but I would prefer Hierophant because of the new Cluster Jewels. So with Hierophant, we gain access to Divine Guidance which means that we actually have a 40% mind over matter pool. So 40% of the damage that we take goes to our mana, 60% goes to our life. Um, then for Uber Lab, I know I'm skipping everything, but for Uber Lab, you're either gonna go Sanctuary of Thought or you're gonna go Conviction of Power. The only reason why I didn't allocate this point yet is because it says 50% less mana cost of skills. And if you guys are unaware, there are new support gems in the game now. Um, so for example, there is an Archmage support gem where supported skills have extra added lightning and supported skills have a base mana cost equal to 6% of unreserved maximum mana. If that value is higher, supported skills gain additional lightning damage equal to 127% of your mana cost. So, that being said, ramping up the mana cost is like a multiplier to your damage. And because of the way Storm Blast and Runebind work, so right over here i want to go ahead and show a little example so i'm going to change this playback speed to 0 0.5 and explain how this works so if you look here he takes his cursor and he starts hovering it so every 0 0.12 seconds before any modifiers it will create a square i do believe that this square is not scaled by aoe it's just a default array it looks like a checker pattern i could be wrong but i will explain where i think the aoe comes in then you channel when you channel, you're infusing your mana into these squares. That's why I say, before I give you guys the links, I need to find out what's gonna be better because the, sig the little runes, the sigils, can only hold a maximum amount of mana. Once they're done with their mana capacity, 
the channel will start going to the other rune. So if you look here, see how this is kind of ding, 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 and then he lets go and it explodes. So hypothetically, if you could charge your, your rune with one tick and the overflow mana, the excess mana bounces to other ones, then you could look at maximum mana as a cast speed multiplier because you have to channel less because you're infusing more. I, th I basically took the same application when I paid Blight like four years ago. Blight felt terrible at the beginning, but the mechanics felt cool. If you could ramp up the damage so you don't have to spend eight seconds channeling and you could just tap one time and kill, then it would feel really good. So that's what the goal is. Also, after a little bit of further investigation, I realized I don't think this skill is going to feel that bad because of right here what he did. You can see that this guy just took his mouse cursor and swiped. And in the process of him swiping, in half a second, he already put down, you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think nine, 10, 11, 12. Then you can see he's filling up here and it's, it's bouncing all across. So even though he channeled here, the excess mana, you can see popped all the way across. Now, the, air, the spot where I think the AoE overlap is, is here. When the sigils detonate, you can see there is an area around it, and I believe that's where the AoE scaling comes in, so that you can actually have your runes shotgun and hit multiple times or AoE overlap. Okay. So that's pretty much how the skill works. So now that I've explained that, I'm going to let you guys know how I'm going to be scaling. And remember, I'm sure I'm going to be changing a bunch of stuff once we're actually playing the character. So let's get started. So for 1 to 20, uh, I started off just, you know, basic damage and mana came up, grab retribution, discipline and training, one of the strongest life nodes on the tree, uh, come up, grab amplify, grab light of divinity, holy dominion, and your first life cluster. Now, if you decide you want to go with jewels because AoE scaling is not as good, just come up this way instead and remove the AoE. Don't worry about this convert. I, it, it's bugged. It Nothing's changed, really, so don't worry. Uh, coming over here, I grab Singular Focus because of the 4% physical damage reduction while channeling, and I took the cast speed route right here. When you start getting better gear, you can probably just replace it for this one. Uh, coming up here, grabbing the Purity of Flesh, and this cluster here, I don't know if we keep these forever, but for leveling, they're gonna be super nice. And here's why. Um, this gives you dual wield. Well, basically by dual wielding, you gain access to dark arts. And dual wielding is not bad because you can use two wands with like 150 flat mana. 150 flat mana because mana rolls like 120 as a prefix, maybe even higher nowadays. And you can roll hybrid spell damage with mana. Mana is equal to life with this build. So it's really not that bad. Uh, especially for the leveling stages. So Dark Arts gives you 6% movement speed from these two baby nodes, and then you get the Dark Arts, which is cast speed, uh, attack and cast speed if you've used the movement skill recently, and then mana regen, which we're going to be flame dashing all the time, so no problem. Uh, and then I grab Stormweaver because of the shock effect, which is effective non-damaging ailments, mana regen, and lightning damage, but I don't think this is going to be extremely important. Uh, and now we're branching over to Ellie Overload. Now you can see with this one, uh, I did not pick up Insightfulness, but Insightfulness I think is going to be more for an endgame uh, idea, and here's why. Technically, you could grab Sanctuary of Thought, which is 20% of maximum mana as extra energy shield. Then you could grab Arcane Will, which is 4%. Then you could also use a Mind Spiral Helmet, which, do I have it here, or is it... Where did it go? I like can't click it for some reason. Here we go. Mind Spiral. Mind Spiral gives you up to 10% of maximum mana gained as maximum energy shield, and then you get access to like the energy shield leech support, and that's just pretty interesting. I'm, I'm pretty curious to see how much effective life we can pump and how defensive we can actually be with the character. Okay. But going back to it, uh, let me go ahead and go to the next one. So here we go, 61. You can see we have moved across. I've grabbed the entire cluster here for Mystic Bulwark along with the mana and spell, mana, mana, etc. This is a very strong node for spell damage. Uh, coming down, grabbing Deep Wisdom, Arcane Will, Blast Radius, all of this. Now with the rest of the tree, you can see we've booked to the Scion Life Wheel and to the um, Marauder Life Wheel along with Warrior's Blood 
which Warrior's Blood's actually really good because it gives you increased stun threshold. We actually will not have a huge life pool due to the fact that 40% of our life, well, the damage we take goes to mana, which means it's very important to scale mana, which means since stun is based off our life pool, this actually helps us a bit if we don't acquire stun immunity. Okay, um, coming up over here, you can see that I've went up and grabbed this Lightning Cluster. I don't know if we're going to need the Lightning Cluster, but until I get access to my Cluster Jewels, I will definitely grab the Lightning Cluster because it gives us chance to shock and shock effectiveness on the right hand side over here. And then Heart of Thunder gives us a little bit of Leech, which is pretty nice. And then you can see with this one here, I decided to drop this and save about 20 points to go into Cluster Jewels. So now we're going to go over to the next part of the Cluster Jewels. You can see this template has 180 life and 174 mana. However, it is not crit, and I will explain why I am not playing crit. Okay, so to bring up the fun part, the Cluster Jewels. Now for people who don't know, I would show you an image, but the website for Path of Exile is down right now. You can have one large cluster, which will then branch off into two medium clusters, which can then branch off into two small clusters. Maybe there's some difference in there, but let's just use that as our basic template. So, uh, we don't know the rarity of all this stuff yet. Let's just assume that if it gives you life or mana, it's going to be extremely rare. And I'm pretty sure some of the ones I'm going to talk about are extremely rare, but unfortunately we just don't really have all the information yet. But I would like to aim for you with, you know, aim at what you should be focusing on. So, under the lightning section right here, in the lightning section, you can see, and this was user made, not made by GDG. We just pulled all the nodes. We just don't know the rarity, right? Supercharge. Lightning damage with non-critical strikes is lucky. Let me explain what this means. This means if your lightning damage is 17 to 6,000, you roll a dice when you use your spell, and you rolled 3K. Well, supercharge means that you roll twice, so you roll again. Automatically on the same hit, you don't see it, it's calculated on the game side, and you roll 6K. Lucky means all of your damage that is not critical strike, that is lightning, is rolled twice every time you hit, which is a huge multiplier to lightning damage because of the way the damage range works. So supercharge is like number one focus for damage for us. The next thing we could get here, Storm Drinker is pretty good because of the lightning leech and 8% lightning pen. If you're going crit, I think Snowstorm is sick because uh, of the, basically it'll give you the ability to freeze everything, which is awesome. Then over in Elemental Ailments over here, uh, which is going to be another one that we're going to be focusing on. Now, one thing to note is you can actually stack these nodes. You cannot stack them on the same cluster though, so let me explain. Say I have a medium cluster and it has supercharge. It will not have two supercharges, but say I have another medium cluster, because a large can branch off to two, then that separate one could roll lightning and I could have two supercharge. Granted, you probably would not want two supercharge, you'd probably want what I'm gonna go into now, which is overshock. 30% increased lightning damage, your shocks can increase damage taken by up to a maximum of 60%, 30% increased shock effect. This is a huge multiplier for us. Um, so overshock is definitely what we're gonna to aim towards. And if I'm gonna stack anything, it's probably overshock. Then cold conduction is not too bad. Enemies shocked by your hits are chilled. The reason why I say this is good is we are not a crit build, which means we're not gonna be stacking chance to chill or chance to freeze. We're just gonna be getting some shock effect and, and shock chance. So automatically chilling targets by nature is really cool. And this is rolled in the same cluster that would roll overshock. So that's kind of nice, right? So these are definitely the two main things that we're gonna aim towards. I don't wanna theory craft too much more because I need to really understand the rarity of where everything is gonna be placed but to highlight a couple of others that would be pretty good in my opinion. Um, if we look at, as an example down here, this is on the defensive side. We don't know if this is strictly only defensive, but let's assume that these are some of the more expensive ones as well. So chaos defense, unaffected by poison is really good. The reason why I talk about unaffected by poison is there is a new gem now called Arcane Cloak. Arcane Cloak is basically the mana version of Steel Skin, but scales better. So it's more like the mana version of Molten Shell, actually. So, spends a portion of your mana to grant a buff that takes some of the damage from your hits uh, for you until depleted. 
the buff grants added lightning damage based on the amount of mana spent. So let's just use an example. Spend 64% of current mana. So you just ripped like half of your mana pool. Because this only protects against hits, it does not protect against degen. So if you're not paying attention, you rip 4,000 mana, and then all of a sudden you have a fat degen on you, and the guard from Arcane Cloak does not even work against it. So that's why regeneration is going to be important, and paying attention to degens is going to be very important. Um, so definitely Anti-Venom for Unaffected by Poison is not bad, and assuming it rolls on the same thing, Bless is crazy because it gives maximum life, maximum mana, and Chaos Res. So this is a much more, you know, a defensive focus. Um, if we look down here in the mana section, even in the life section, there's like uh, Holistic Health, which gives uh, max health and max mana. You've got down here, uh, where is it? Um, I don't even know how to pronounce this blah 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 idea. You get maximum mana and lightning resistance as well. Um, you also get a lot of really cool stuff. Isn't there a pantheon that gives poison immunity? There is, yeah, but you have to unlock it. And by not having to use that, maybe you can use another pantheon instead. Path of Exile is all about manipulating your gear and your choices and etc. If you acquire one thing in one area, then you can change another. And you don't really know what's better until you have, I guess, a goal to aim towards. Scintillating. Okay, then up over here, there is the channeling section, which is not necessarily too bad. Um, I don't really like the channeling stuff, but the main thing from the channeling I would see that I would use is probably Enduring Focus, which gives you the ability to gain endurance charges. Um, but since we're not going like acrobatics or block cap in the moment, I don't think I'm really going to be trying to face tank things. I think I'm just going to have a large effective life pool with some leech and sustain, and that's pretty much going to be our main focus. Okay, so to go back to this passive tree to explain it, uh, I know a lot of people are going to ask questions based off of like, oh, well, you know, uh, aren't you going to be too squishy since you're investing too much on the cluster jewels, etc.? And this is where I say no. This is why I wanted to play Hierophant over Trickster, because Hierophant seems a lot easier for me to build personally. The reason why is, instead of spending the 20 travel points, or not really 20, more like 10 travel points to go to Shadow and get the shock effectiveness and go crit and everything else, I can instead go to the Scion Life Wheel and the Marauder Wheel, grab the Life here, the Life here, the Life at Templar, and then branch into my Cluster Jewels, which is over here. So I'm utilizing my cluster jewels to save me points on pathing of here. So that's one really nice thing about the cluster jewels. Um, so th this is definitely going to be pretty much our main focus. Other than that, I don't really think there's anything else I can tell you guys. Like I said, I just wanted this to be like a template for you guys so that you can kind of understand a little bit of what I'm going to be playing. And as I said, after today or a little bit into today i'll make a first impressions and explain more about how i'm scaling it um but yeah that's pretty much about it so hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves let me know what you're going to be playing in the path of exile delirium league because i'm pretty excited to see uh, i'm excited to see a lot of off meta stuff i'm excited to try out I know I said I wasn't going to play summons for a long time, but I used to always try to play specter builds with specters that you couldn't desecrate, and now you can! So that's really cool. I, I definitely want to try out some unique summoner builds. Um, anyway, though, catch you guys all later. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pogs. Take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.